In this screencast, we'll um, um, begin uh, a discussion of uh, primitive recursively uh, closed classes of uh, functions. Uh, so in our previous uh, screencasts, uh, we uh, discussed uh, composition and primitive recursion. So, um, uh, so primitive recursion, uh, what's primitive recursion, and composition. Uh, it's a method of um, uh, obtaining uh, functions uh, from new functions from uh, other functions. So let's say if we have um, um, a set of functions, um, f1 through fn, and the uh, primitive recursion um, is a constructor that allows us to take those functions and combine them into uh, a new function. Uh, so, um, the question uh, that we want to ask is, uh, does primitive recursion capture computability? Okay, does composition capture computability? Well, in this context, primitive recursion capture computability. And the answer is uh, no. Uh, in, in what sense is it no? Because um, uh, primitive uh, recursive uh, functions um, is a proper subclass of uh, computable functions. So this is PR, primitive recursive functions. Uh, they are a proper subset of computable functions. In other words, there are functions um, uh, that are computable, but are not primitive recursive. Okay, And we have not formally uh, defined uh, what it means to be a primitive recursive uh, function, but this is just a look ahead a taste of things to come. So there is a function, right? there are functions, computable functions that are not um, uh, primitive recursive. So um, we begin our ascent toward uh, the definition of uh, a primitive recursive function with three initial functions. So any theory um, must have its own uh, primitives and uh, the theory of uh, primitive recursive uh, functions uh, begins with uh, uh, three primitives, initial functions, from which uh, we will start uh, constructing other functions. So, and the three initial functions uh, that uh, we will be using, they are, well, I guess, um, uh, uh, primitives in the sense that we cannot go smaller than, uh, uh, than, uh, than what they offer. Uh, so the first one is a successor, uh, and that allows us to compute the successor of a uh, natural number, all right, x. Uh, so the next natural number. The second one is a null function, right? So uh, takes any natural number and nullifies it, converts them into converts it into uh, zero, maps it into zero. And then the third one is the uh, projection function. Um, so u uh, and it uh, sub i, and then the superscript is n. Uh, the superscript um, is the number of arguments that the projection function takes, x1 through xn, and i is the number of the uh, argument, the argument that we would like to uh, access or project. So uh, we will return um, uh, the value of x sub i. All right, then x1 through xn obviously are natural numbers. So uh, programmatically speaking, uh, we can think of a projection uh, a function as, uh, as an array access uh, function. Right? So you have a sequence of n uh, elements, and uh, you need to access element number i. And we're going to assume that um, i is a legal uh, uh, access number from 1, uh, 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 starts at 1, and ends at uh, n. So successor null and projection. So um, we can actually effectively construct um, just from the successor and the null uh, function um, each and every natural number, all of the, the set of natural numbers. So zero, and then the successor of zero, the successor of the successor of zero, the successor of the successor of the successor of zero, and uh, and so forth. So this is. Uh, once we have uh, the null, uh, or zero, once we have the successor and we have composition, uh, then uh, we can construct all of the mm, uh, uh, natural numbers, the set of natural numbers. So this is um, zero and uh, one, which is the successor of zero, and uh, this is the successor of the successor of zero, the successor of one is two, and this is uh, three, and uh, and so forth.
Um, so a couple of examples of uh, uh, projection. So let's, uh, what's the projection of U31 um, uh, 1, 3, and 10? This is, uh, this is equal to 1. And what's um, uh, the projection of the second element out of three elements, one, uh, the same three elements, one, three, and ten? Uh, this is equal to uh, three. And uh, what's the projection of um, the third element out of three elements, one, three, two, and one, three, two, and that's equal to ten. Okay, um, so um, we will um, uh, define now, make a formal definition uh, of a primitive recursively class, uh, pri primitive recursively closed class of uh, uh, functions. And a class of total functions, C, is um, uh, uh, primitive recursively closed if uh, the initial functions are in that class. And um, any uh, functions obtained from the functions that are already in that class by composition uh, or uh, recursion, or primitive recursion, well, let's say um, primi no, uh, pr primitive recursion or recursion, they're synonymous in this context, is also in C. So. So let's let's illustrate it with a diagram. For example, let's say that we have a class C of functions can be finite or infinite. Um, well, no, nah, it has to be it has to be um, an infinite uh, class. Um, So we have to prove um, first that the three initial functions are in that class. And um, well, let's say we have um, functions that are already in that class. Uh, yeah, some some functions or any, any any functions, and we apply to them composition or um, a primitive recursion to construction methods that uh, we have uh, studied and investigated uh, composition primitive recursion and we get the new function and that function will be in um, C. So let's uh, prove this theorem. The class of computable functions is um, uh, primitive recursively uh, closed. So this is uh, theorem uh, 3.1, chapter, chapter 3 of Computability, Complexity in Languages uh, by uh, Davis, Weyoker, and Segal, second edition. So the class of computable functions is primitive recursively uh, closed, or PRC. Okay, well, let's outline uh, the sketch of this um, of this proof, um, the logical uh, logical steps, proof outline, and then we'll uh, dive uh, deeper into uh, each step. So let's say proof outline. First, uh, we need to uh, show that the initial functions, the three initial functions, are in um, uh, the class of computable functions. So C in our case is the class of computable functions. The second is that um, uh, we need to show that any uh, uh, we, we can use and we can use the uh, previously uh, proved uh, oops I misspelled proved proved uh, theorems yeah. 
that show that any functions obtained from computable um, uh, uh, computable functions from the initial initial functions uh, by um, uh, composition uh, or recursion are also uh, are also computable. Um, so the first part, we um, show that the three initial functions are computable. Uh, so the first uh, uh, the first uh, uh, function is computable. Well, and here's the program, which is obviously total. And uh, here's an L program. Y goes to uh, uh, well arrow x one plus one. Uh, the null function. Uh, well, what's the program? It's obviously total. What's the L program that computes it? Well, the empty program will do. Or y arrow zero will also do. Um, uh, three is um, we need to show that the projection function, the projection function, projection function is uh, is computable. Obviously, the projection function is total. And uh, um, now uh, here's the program uh, y arrow uh, x i. And so just to uh, so that we remember what we have uh, shown, the projection is this function. Uh, we take uh, an arguments the program takes and arguments and uh, just assigns the value of uh, the ith argument to uh, the value of y. Okay, so the first proof, uh, the first, um, uh, the first uh, uh, part of the proof is done. The second part of the proof is that any mm, uh, function obtained from uh, the initial functions or, 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 or uh, other functions that have been shown uh, to be computable uh, by composition um, or recursion will also be computable, and we have proved that previously that we have uh, that any functions obtained by composition from computable functions um, uh, is computable. Any function. We have also proved that uh, any um, uh, any any function. Uh, uh, functions obtained um, by uh, recursion uh, from uh, computable uh, from computable functions um, are also computable. Computable. Um, uh, so, um, and any um, any sequence of uh, compositions and recursions. Oh, there's a grammar um, mistake in one and two. Any functions are computable and any functions are computable. Okay, well, never mind. Any sequence of compositions uh, and recursions applied to uh, computable functions produces a uh, computable, func uh, computable function. Okay, so um, um, and this is a uh, an easy inductive uh, inductive argument that you can try. Well, we're not gonna uh, do this, but um, you know it is true because composition and recursion uh, preserve computability. <laughs> 